All right, I say we get started. How about you guys? Can I actually get you to move right over here? That way, I'm not you're not talking to the back of my head again. All right, so give me a report card. If you were here last week, how did you do? Okay, so what are four things that we covered last week? Engagement, all right. Give me, a, somebody give me an overview of what engagement is and why it's important. Mm, all right, so I'll help you here. So engagement basically is, is helping the dog get in the mood for training. If your dog is focused on other things, your dog is focused on, let's say the kids outside playing, uh, you know, the other dogs in the neighborhood and you're trying to work with your dog, what's the chance of your dog listening to you or even probably comprehending what you're asking the dog to do? Probably pretty slow. So dog, the engagement gets the dog's brain into saying, okay, I'm open for learning, I'm ready to learn, okay? Okay, what else did we cover last week? Release. Release, okay. What's release mean? What a give me. You're, you're done, dog. Go to your table. I like that. Okay. Okay. We. It's a release from the behavior. A release from training. A good way to associate is you're basically taking the leash off the dog. Like let's say when you go for, like this young lady goes for a run. I guarantee probably when she walks in the door, she unclips the leash. The dog runs. Probably gets a drink and goes gets a toy and kind of becomes a dog, right? So the le release is basically just. Tell the dog, hey, training's over, or, or if you're going to, if you're going to go from one behavior to another, if you're asking your dog to down and then you're gonna ask your dog to come, you can release the dog from one behavior and then ask for another behavior. But most of the time you're gonna basically use it when you're all done training, okay? Then we went over sit and down, right? So we talked about down, we teach the dog to go from a down standing, not from a sit to a down. Do you guys remember why we did that? You're right. So it's two different muscles memory, two different muscle memories. If you always tell your dog to sit and then down, it basically confuses the, for the dog. And if you tell your dog to sit and then it downs and you get upset at your dog, is it the dog's fault or your fault? It's your fault because you basically told the dog that usually down prelude sit. So if you tell your dog to sit, the dog's gonna use reason and say, hey, I might as well just down because I know it's usually coming. So we encourage you guys to separate the two between sit and down. And then we did work on sit. Basically sit's pretty easy. You put a dog, piece of food above the dog's head, the dog's butt drops, you reward the dog, and the dog learns really quickly what sit means. I think we worked on getting the dog to sit a little bit closer. Um, and I think we worked on getting the little bit clearer to the dog's head. We sit a little bit uh, faster. Okay, so do we need to go over anything? Are you guys pretty feel pretty confident that we can move on? Any questions? Anything come up during the week that you want to talk about? So this is, a, this is actually this is a really good question. So this is a pretty common problem with dachshunds. Um, one of the reason being is the origin, the, do what? Oh, the body is just Yeah, exactly. Well, and so, and now I'm not an expert on the breed, but from my understanding, they used to be for rodents, used to be hunting rodents. So they'd have to go under small bells of hay, um, into small areas, and so they were designed so they can squat down. So there, there is an option. If you can't teach the dog with using luring or using objects to get the dog to understand drop, sometimes what we can do what's called free shaping. So free shaping is basically where we try to capture a particular behavior. So let's say every time that you lay down on the bed to read a book, he jumps up there and he lays down, right? So the moment you jump up on the bed, you know he's about to lay down, calmly say down. When he downs, feed him. Okay, next day do the same thing, next day do the same thing, or what you do is lay on the bed with him, he downs, you feed him, toss a piece of food off the bed, he gets a piece of food, jumps back up, you know that he's gonna down the moment he jumps up there, right? Calmly stay down, when he downs, and you feed him. It's, it's a long way of, of, a long about way of doing it. Sometimes it can be really slow going, however, the dog does f finally understand, oh, down means my body does this, and then I get a reward. Make sense? 
Okay. Try that. All right. So tonight we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover actually three different things. Oh, did we also cover the recall last week? Did we work on cam last week? Okay, we're gonna work on it probably this week. So we're gonna cover three things now. We're gonna cover recall. We're also gonna cover attention and leave it and take it, okay? So we're gonna talk more about the recall than really work on it with all the individual dogs. The reason being is most of the time to work, to really work on the recall, we need to have the dogs be a little bit free. Yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of, we got a couple large dogs, a couple small dogs in here, and we don't want to take any chances. So I can use my friend Christina here. She's going to help me with it. Uh, recall is not on the board if you ever, if you took a picture of it. The reason being is I kind of fit it in when, when there is a, uh, let's say I talk really quick during one class and I have about 20 minutes to kill. Usually I kind of throw it in there. So we're going to start with it tonight. So one of the biggest parts of the recall is we start using the word come before we actually properly teach the behavior. What happens is when our dogs are young and they're puppies, they kind of spoil us. You guys ever realize when your dogs are puppies, they follow you around for everywhere, right? They don't want to leave your side. You're like the best thing to slice bread. But then come about six months of age, now the dog starts exploring. The dog starts thinking, hey, there's more to the world than just mom and dad. So now the dog wanders away. You try to call the dog. And the very first time you try to call the dog, and the dog says, eh, I'm gonna go do something else. Guess what? The dog just learned that there's options, that it has a choice not to come or to come. So the first lesson of the recall is, don't put your dog in a situation where you know they're not gonna come. If you bring your dog to the park and it gets off the leash and takes off, and you know that the chance of your dog coming to you is one in a million if you say come, never use come. Take off the opposite direction saying puppy, 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 whatever you have to do, but don't say come, 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 because it's gonna get you nowhere if, unless you've properly taught it, okay? It, this is something that you guys can work on in your backyard, something you can work on in your house. Um, if you do work on it in an outside neutral environment, remember a neutral environment is anywhere that's new to the, or that's not new to the dog. In other words, your yard is a neutral environment. The dog's always in your yard. Your, back, your house is a neutral environment. If you're gonna work outside of your neutral environment, Make sure you have a long line on the dog or some way of enforcing what you're gonna ask the dog, which is gonna become, okay? So, Christina and I are gonna play a little game. Okay, so I'm gonna be Christina's dog. So one thing that Christina can do, and I'm gonna teach you two ways of doing this. One, to do it with a second person, and two, to do it by yourself, okay? So what Christina's gonna do is she's gonna start with a low engagement. Okay, I'm engaged, I'm engaged, okay. Now, Christine's gonna take a piece of food, large piece of food, she's gonna toss it to the left, I'm gonna go get it, okay? She's gonna go away from me, and she's gonna say, puppy, 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 puppy. and I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna run to her, and she's gonna reward me, okay? Now, she's gonna toss a piece of food again that way. I'm gonna release you. Yep, she says free. Free. Okay, I go get the piece of food, she runs away. And she's calling me and I come to her she feeds me okay so this is a little game that we play can anybody tell me why we're using puppy okay but why are we using come right off the bat okay so think about it like this let's say we were gonna do this ten times out of ten times seven of, seven of those times she calls me and on the way to hey I'm like hey what are you doing how you doing how you doing okay Okay, and she tells me, come again. Come. Hey, I hear you, Mom. Okay. Come. Now, finally, I come to her. Okay. Now, seven out of ten times she does that. What am I learning that come really means? Do what you want. Do what you want, right? There's options to it. So, before we put a command, hi, good to see you. Before we put a command to a behavior, we make sure the dog firmly understands the muscle memory firmly understands the, 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 what we're asking the dog. So if out of 10 times, seven of the times she calls me, I turn around and I run to her and I get rewarded, what muscle memory am I learning now? The right way to come, right? Who doesn't want their dog to run to them? Now, if you do this with your dog, your dog kind of meanders to you, it's probably not a good time to put the come command to it. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is a fun game you can play in your backyard, in your house. If you have a big house, I'd really encourage you to, to drop food in one room 
take off in another room and hide from your dog calling your dog. Say puppy, puppy. Okay, what happens is it creates this anxiety, like, oh man, it turns into a game. Pretty soon come isn't like, I'm at the dog park, which I don't like, but I'm at the dog park. I'm playing with this dog over here. Christina Gray called me. Yeah, wait a minute. I like this dog way more than you. Why would I ever want to leave this dog, right? However, if the come is such a fun game and the, and the dog loves to run. Okay, we'll stop role playing now, I'm feeling dumb. So if the dog loves to come to, uh, you, to you, but it, you know, in this case, to, if I love to come to Christina, most likely in that crucial point where you take your dog to Walmart, it jumps out of the car and you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's gonna run, to, you know, run across the parking lot. You say come and initiates that game. The dog says, wait a minute. I know this game. This game means I run to bright mom and I get this huge reward. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is a way to teach it by yourself. A way if you have somebody else is I can use both of these ladies. Okay. So you're going to have to use a little imagination here. Christina's going to be down there. Okay. Okay. What's going to happen is Diane's going to hold me by the collar. Christina's going to come up. She's going to show me her paycheck. Okay. She's gonna run away and say, puppy, puppy, puppy. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Now, when she's running away, what am I wanting to do? I wanna to get to her, right? But I'm being held back. The moment she lets go of my collar, what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna to run to her. The moment I get to her, she's gonna feed me. She's gonna grab my collar, turn me around. Diane's gonna come up. She's gonna show me the paycheck. She's gonna run away. Oh man, I really wanna to get to you. I really wanna to get to you. She lets me go and I run to her and I get fed. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're creating separation anxiety. You can say, sit back down. We're, we're using a little bit of separation anxiety to our advantage here. A concept that I usually use in this situation is if we have a rubber band and we stretch that rubber band, besides break, what does a rubber band want to do? It wants to snap back to its original form, right? The more we stretch the rubber band, the more pressure is it being applied, the more it's going to snap back quicker. So the more that if you guys can play this game with somebody, the more you can play this game, the more exuberant you are when you're running away, the more the dog is going to run to you. We want to teach the muscle memory of booking it to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Tell you what, we're going to do it with actually one dog. Can I, can you, can you do this? Okay. Um, I'm going to move you real quick. Can I, can I put you right over here? Thank you. I promise that dog will not bite. And if it does, you zoo. Um, grab one of these leashes, okay? Do you have one with you? Okay, go grab it, okay. So she's gonna grab a long line real quick and then we're gonna do it. So, why do we, why are we gonna use a long line? To make sure that she comes. You got it, to make sure we don't put the dog in a failing situation. Because even when we're teaching this, if we allow the dog to run over this dog or run over that dog, what are we teaching the dog that it's got options to do? Not come to us, right? Okay, so uh, a little side note about long lines. You guys can pick one up on like Amazon for like five or six bucks. You can go to a local store, and get one for like 20 bucks or go to Horse Blanket. And basically just get yourself a, a lunging line for using horses for like 12 bucks at like any horse and tack place, okay? They are very handy, especially if you're saying, hey, I wanna start working on my recall outside of my neutral environment. In other words, outside like in a park or if you guys go to the beach or something like that, these are really handy, okay? So please hand leash to her. So I can almost guarantee this dog is gonna rock at this. If it doesn't, then, uh, oh boy, I'm in trouble. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so you got some food? So the one thing great about this dog is, the dog does not need engagement, I guarantee it. The dog's already thinking, hey, you got food. If the dog wasn't engaged, we'd probably start with a little bit of engagement, but I don't think he necessarily needs it. Okay, what well, so Christine's gonna do is Christine's gonna hold the dog by the collar. Your dogs may get excited in a moment. Just get there and kind of feed them a little bit. Preoccupy them, this will help a little bit. Mom's gonna come up to the dog. Okay, mom, go to the dog. Show the dog your food. I want you to run away and say, puppy, puppy, puppy. Okay, and then Christine's let the dog go. Good job. All right, then mom's gonna hold on to the dog. She's gonna hand Christine a little handful of food. Okay, hold, nope, hold the dog, hold the dog. And let the dog go. 
Good job. Good job. So now we're gonna act like we've done this 10, 15, 20 times. Now Christina's gonna tell the dog free and then let the dog go. Because we don't want the dog just to get to one, run to one person and run right back to the other person. They figure this out really quick. So we want the dog to run to us, wait for the free command, and then run to the other person, okay? So when you hear Christina say free, just say come, okay? Good job. Okay, now you hold on to this collar. Okay. Now wait a minute, where is he looking right now? Is he focused on Christina? So if she was to let him go, where would he go? Probably that way and go say hi to the lab, right? Stay free and let me go. Good job, all right. Thank you so much. So do we understand this concept? Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. This is a great game to play with people, okay? Even, I, I would recommend not just strangers, but anybody in your house that the dog knows. Make sure that they are on the same page as you because if you don't, if after a while you don't say free to the dog, and the dog runs the other person and they just get fed, the dog's not really learning the correct muscle memory. We're trying to tie in the word come with running to the person, not just running to somebody back and forth in order to get reward. Does that kind of make sense? Am I losing you guys or are we on the same page? Okay. Can I put you back over here again so you're not back? Thank you. Yes, so I was gonna to touch on that, but thank you, Diana. Um, if you do this, don't do this on a prong collar. The reason being is we want the dog to pull into the leash. Prong collars encourage the dog not to pull into the leash. And plus we don't want to take a chance of hurting the dog, okay? So just do this like on a flat collar or harness. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be a fun game. You can add distance. If you want to wear your dog out and you have like a half an acre or acre of property, guarantee this, do this four or five times and your dog will sleep the rest of the night. Okay? We do this with puppies out at our training field. We have a huge training field, and two or three times the puppy sleeps or rest of the night. It's very awesome. Okay? <laughs> Any questions on that before we move on? Okay, so we're gonna work on attention and then we're gonna work on leave it and take it. So this is, attention and engagement is a little bit confusing to people sometimes. <laughs> engagement is a frame of mind. Engagement is a mood that we are trying to get the dog in. It's not attention. Attention is something that we're gonna teach your dog to do. We're gonna teach your dog to look at your face. Okay, so this comes in really handy for a couple different things. One, if you're in a store, let's say we have this big shepherd over here, and he's in a store and this untrained Rottweiler walks by, okay? There's two things he can do. One, he can give them my business card and tell them the great things about me. Okay, I had to put the plug in there. And two, he can teach his dog to look at his face. Because if his dog's looking at him, is the dog looking at the other, other dog? Okay, so one of the things I told him when he first came in, and you guys can all hear this, a stare turns into a bark. A bark turns into a lunge, a lunge turns into a lawsuit. Okay, so if you're in a store and your dog is staring at another dog, fixating, at that point you need to redirect the dog. Don't wait till the dog gets to the phase of barking because then it's too late. So. Attention is something that when the dog is, starts to focus on something, you can easily just ask the dog to look or watch whatever command that you pair with it. The dog looks at, excuse me, looks at you, then you reward the dog. Here's how we do it. I'm gonna use my friend Christina here again. So I'm gonna jump forward and say that I'm this dog right here and I'm already engaged with her. So we don't need engagement. She's gonna take out a handful of food. You guys are all gonna do this in a moment, okay? Turn this way a little bit so they can all see, please. So she's gonna take, she's gonna put the food in front of my nose, let me sniff it. She's gonna bring it up to her cheek and she's gonna feed right away. Good. She's gonna do this 15, 20 times. Feed, feed, feed. So the idea is we're teaching the muscle memory of looking up at the face and then the reward comes. Up at the face and then the reward comes. Things that you do not wanna do. You don't wanna block your face. Okay, here, turn around so they can see. Don't do this. Because if she does, if you do this, what is the dog looking at? Your face or the hand? Look at the hand, okay? The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to hold it away from your face. That's going to come in the next step. You want to teach the dog to look right about there to your eye, okay? 
So we're not going to put any command to it right off the bat. We want to do enough repetitions to get the dog to look up at your face. Um, for those who have really small dogs, if you, yeah, you can sit down, it's easier. Um, you, you guys can all sit down. If you want to do a standing, you're welcome to. Um, sometimes it's a little easier, but you guys decide what you'd rather do. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to do three sets of them. So 10 pieces of food or 12 pieces of food right around there. Uh, at least three sets, then sit back down and I'll show you the next step, okay? And so we'll come around to help you. So you just, yes, yeah, say thank you, Christina. Release your dog between the sets. That way you can reload your food. They don't have to be. They can be. They can be down. They just don't tell them to sit or down. Oh. Okay. okay. Yes. So this young lady brought up a good point. Don't tell your dog to sit and then do this. If your dog chooses to sit, that's fine. But we don't want to teach the dog that it only looks at you in a seating position. Good job. Okay. But you're holding it in front of your chin, right? I want you to hold it a little bit off to the side of your face. Just closer to your face. Okay, up a little bit. Right there. That's why I want you to hold it, okay? Because we want them to look at your eyes. Okay, good job. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Good job. You're just teaching the muscle memory. Excellent. Good job. Excellent. I love your animation. Good job. Also, when you do this, don't always do this out of one hand. Don't always do it out of your left or your right. Mix it up. So do a couple out of one hand and then a couple out of the other hand. That way the dog's not targeting one hand. How's the biting of the fingers going this week? It's better with the better? that way. Yeah. All right, good job. And you do know that your the leash goes on only the one ring, right? Maybe last week I had you, but I mean that. So if the dog reacts fine on it, then leave it on that. But the, actually, the, it, what you have it on is considered dead, where it doesn't. The collar doesn't contract and open and close. If you have it on live, then the collar works like it's supposed to. However, if that works just for him, then leave it there. Okay. Okay. But if you find that he's kind of. Okay, like then, then leave it like that. But if, if you find that she starts pulling a lot on it, then put on the light ring. Okay. Okay? So I've noticed that there's some tension syrup in my hand, but most of the time he'll stare at me, so do I wait till he looks at me, or do I... You can. So okay. you're, you're, he's kind of telling you the next step. Okay. That's fine. So if you can jump right to that, if he looks at your eyes, then yeah, feed him for it. Good job. Good job. He just sits there and stares at you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay. because he's choosing. That's right now, he yeah. Right now, he doesn't really understand what free means, yeah. Yeah. but he will after time. Or time. Yeah. Good job. Hey, the only thing I encourage you not to do is you're really bending over, right? Okay. Yeah. okay. Right. So when you're standing up, you're not going to bend over every time you want the dog to look at you. That's you true. want the dog to look up at you no matter what. That's true. Yeah. Yes, there it is. Good job. Good job. Okay, go and finish up the set you're on, and then we're gonna show you the next step. Good job. So the only thing I would say is you're doing this a little bit slow, okay? So put it right in front of her nose and then quickly up to your face, okay? And feet. There you go. Excellent. I really like her. I'll babysit any time. Okay. Okay. So, let's talk about the next steps. Christina, can I use you guys? Okay. So, once your dog understands to follow the hand up to the face, now it's time to put this on a command. Okay? So, what Christina's going to do is she's going to bring it to my nose, bring it up to her face, and she's going to say watch or look. It doesn't matter what you use, just make sure you're consistent on it, good? Okay? And the mo and you say it when the hand goes up. So when the dog goes to the face, looks at the eyes, look. feed. Right away, good job. Look. Okay, good, and look. look. So now we're pairing command with, don't wanna run another dog. We were pairing command with the dog looking up at our face, okay? So that's one step we're gonna work on in a moment. The next step we're gonna work on at the same time is we're going to test your dog a little bit. So. Some of your dogs are gonna get this really quick, 
some of your dogs are gonna have a little bit difficulty. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to do four or five of these reps from the face to the, okay? Look. Look. Okay, that's three, Look. four, Look. five, okay. Now you're gonna do this. You're gonna bring it up to the face and you're gonna hold it away from your face. Now what's gonna happen is right now your dog is gonna stare at the food. I don't want you to help them stay there from it. I don't want you to help the dog by saying their name, noises, anything like that. Because anything your dog can learn on its own quicker, wait, anything your dog can learn on its own, it's gonna learn quicker. If you have to help the dog, the dog is always gonna rely on your help. Just like kids. If you, do your, if you help your kids with their homework, the moment they walk in the door, instead of letting them try to figure it out on their own, you're always going to have to do that. Does that make sense? So what's gonna happen is you hold the food away from your face, the dog's gonna stare at the, at the hand, but if you get lucky, the dog's gonna look at your eyes. The moment the dog looks at your eyes, you're going to feed him. That very first time the dog puts the two and two together, what are you gonna do? You talk. Say that again? You got it. Throw the dog a party, right? Because we're trying to tell the dog, man, that's really what we want them to do. Not stare at the hand, but stare at the eyes. The moment the dog looks at the eyes, okay. So once the dog starts getting that concept of looking at the eyes, then you no longer have to do the rep of bring it to the nose, to the face. You don't have to do that anymore because now the dog just figured it out on his own to stare at the eyes instead of the hand. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's see you guys try it. So do, if you're ready to put a command to it, if you think your dog's understanding to look at your face, say watch or look every time your hand goes up, do that five or six times, and then let's test your dog and see if it puts the two and two together. Can I show you something? Yeah. Sit back down. Okay. Did that break? Okay. Um, wait, wait, don't push, no, wait, don't push them off from it. Drop a piece of food. Say off. Down. Okay. What are you going to use for laying down? <laughs> Two different ones, okay? So if the more you fight the dog and push the dog off, it kind of turns into a game, right? So just drop a piece of food, say off. Drop a piece of food, say off. And then after maybe a couple days of doing that, don't drop the food, say off. And the moment the drops off, dog gets off, throw them a party, okay? It's something we'll work on, but that'll get you by. Okay. Definitely. Good job. He's really looking. Is he? I'm like, my whole little dog and I feel look. Good, okay, now hold it away from your face. Should I go like just back? Yep, wait. Hold on. Even a glance, even a little look. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> try it again, try it again. It hasn't quite put the dots together. Yeah, yep. Okay, wait, don't help, don't say it again, don't help him. Wait, he'll do it. I almost guarantee he's gonna do it. Okay, so go back to a couple, to his nose, to your face, and feed. Feed. Good. Do five or six of... Because if he just, he just doesn't look at me, it's so open. There it is. Okay. Good. There you go. Okay, you're, you're holding up there a little bit too long. Because he wasn't looking at me, he's still looking like right oh, here. Oh, was he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Good call. Yeah, he's got it. Does he got it? Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Oh, there you go. Good, okay. Now hold your hand away from his, your face. Hold it away from your face. Now wait. There it is. Good job. Got it. Let's see this. <laughs> Good job. I saw it. It's awesome. There it is. Ah, uh, you, you almost missed it. Good job. How do you do? Like you never look, you never looks at your face? Okay, then try this. Cheat a little bit. 
pulled the food away from your face, yeah. say his name calmly once, see if he looks at your face. If he does, then feed him like a bunch in a row, okay? And then next time, don't use his name at all, hold it out and see if he puts the two, two together. How's she doing? Yes, there it is. Yeah, awesome. I, I was thinking maybe I needed to say her name. But she, I don't know, she just showed it. Yeah. Hold it away and wait. Hold it further away. Yep, and wait. There you go. Nope, don't help her then. Because if you help her, you're always going to have to help Okay, good job. That's fine, that's awesome. Nicely done. She got there really quick. So he looked, or she looked twice, and you didn't give it to her. Was she not looking in your eyes? Well, it's hard to like show. Glance, right? Okay, so in the beginning stages, you have to feed her just for this to settle. Because we're creating a conflict. She's looking at the food. I'm, I'm not getting anything, Mama. Look at the food. Wait a minute. Okay, that didn't give me the food. If she looks, looks at your eyes and you know. It almost feels like it's like. Yeah, well, yeah. Because her food drive is that high, she doesn't want to miss the food. Okay, so the you're going to be able, we'll talk about this in a minute, but you're going to be able to stand on it so she can stare at you, but right now she doesn't quite understand what to do, okay? okay. We're going to talk about that one second. Okay, when you guys are ready, let's sit back down. Okay, so a couple people uh, asked a good question. How do we get the dog to do more than just a glance? Okay, hey, is it getting for Christina? So remember, this is the first time you're, I, I think, first time your dogs have learned this. For the next couple days, you only may get a glance. Don't push it. True dog training takes months. This may take you months to get, or years. I mean, so please don't, don't go home and, oh my gosh, my dogs only give me a glance. I'm getting frustrated. Be happy they're giving you a glance, even tonight, in this, unneutral environment. However, let's say you say, okay, the dog's doing really good. Christina can hold the food away, and within a second, I look right at her face. Okay, now it's time to start working on a little bit longevity. So what Christina's gonna do is she's gonna do this. She's gonna hold the piece of food right away, right away. Thank you. Okay, I look at the food, I look back at her, and I look at the food. There's no reward with it. I look at the food, look at her, look back at the food, no reward. I look at the food, Look at her, one, 1,000, and boom. She feeds me three or four in a row. And I say, wait, that was kind of interesting, okay? She does that again, okay? I look at the food, look slowly at her face, and then the big reward comes. So now the dog's learning that there's no success in looking at the hand. There's more success in looking at the face. The other thing Christina can do is this. She can put food in both hands, okay? And she can hold them out away from her, with both hands. So now I'm gonna be like, look, 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 that's not getting me anything. Okay, I'll just stare in the middle and boom. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, let's try it with your dog real quick. Let's, let's try it with this dog real quick and see if we can get at least a count of two out of the dog. I feel that confident. I know you guys are thinking I'm nuts, but I think the dog can do it. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna tell her, talk to her about is if you go into your pocket for food every time, it does two things. One, it takes the attention away from your face, and two, it slows down our learning curve. So if you could have like a handful of food. Um, Christina, can you please hold her leash, please? Sure. Christina's gonna hold your leash for safety purposes, okay. if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so she's gonna have food in both hands. Okay, try to watch the dog's head. I know you can't see the eyes. Okay, so she's gonna hold the food out. There, good. So the dog gave her about half a second there, well, which we'll accept right at first. Okay, hold the food out. Good, okay. Now we're gonna ask for a little bit longer. Okay, hold the food out. Oh, that was about a half a second longer than it was last time. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna tell you when to feed this time, okay? But when I tell you to feed, I want you to throw them apart. 
Okay, so now we're gonna push it a little bit, just for you guys. Okay, hold it out. Wait. Wait. Oh. There it is. There. Good, feed him another one. Good. So. Okay, now hold it out again. Let's see if we see the learning curve happening. Hold it out. There it is. Oh, all right, so that time our duration period was way less. The dog understood it way quicker. So the dog is slowly understanding the concept. However, this dog has a ton of food drive. Higher the food drive, the conflict is greater because the dog really does not want to take a chance of missing the food. It's much like if you have kids and you're holding $100 in front of their eyes, man, they're gonna stare at the $100 because they don't want to go anywhere. Okay, yeah, there you go, or a cupcake. Okay, the dog is much the same way. The dog doesn't want to take his eyes off of the prize, the higher the dog wants the prize, okay? Any questions on this? So just a final note on this, don't expect your dog to do this in a pet store. Don't expect your dog to do it in a hectic environment. Work on at home. Pretty soon you'll find that your dog will start looking at your eyes a whole lot more. In fact, if, you, if you're working with your dog and they just sit there and stare at you, reward them for that. Anytime my dog looks at me, I acknowledge it, okay? If I'm, if I'm working, if I'm doing my daily job and my puppy comes over and just sits there and stares at me, I, if I can, I go and I initiate play with them, I go play. If not, I do a marker word, I yes them. If I have food, I do try to reward them at any time. I never ignore it because this is a concept I really want my dog to really have ingrained, okay? Okay, any questions before we move on? Okay, so the next two things we're gonna cover is leave it and take it, okay? So leave it, probably you guys are already working on a little bit but you probably haven't learned the whole picture. So if you're, uh, you guys have cats at home? Anybody have a cat at home? Yeah. Let's say your dog co goes towards a cat. What do you do right now? Yell at him. Yell at him, okay, that's understandable. If I had a cat, I'd probably do the same thing. However, is it fair to the dog that we just yell at the dog? Would you take your children to a candy store and let them go free and just talk on your cell phone when they're uh, four years old? Probably not, why? Because they would go sample a candy. And then if you, you probably would not get upset at them or discipline them, you would say, dang it, why didn't I either teach them or why didn't I put them in, the, or why did I put them in that situation? So a lot of times we have to be fair to the animal and teach the animal to leave things alone. We can't just yell at the animal. So if I leave a steak on the barbecue outside and I have not taught my dog how to leave the food outside at the barbecue and my dog steals the steak, it's totally my fault, it's not the dog's fault. Because the dog thinks, hey, it must be in the backyard, it must be free to my, uh, to my taking, right? So, did we talk about how to teach your dog to stop barking? We talked about that yet? Okay. So, anybody know how to teach a dog to stop barking? How to stop barking? Oh, I like you. She took my answer, so yes. If we want to teach the dog to stop barking, we teach the dog how to bark. And you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. Why would I ever want to teach my dog how to bark? He knows how to bark already. Well, if your dog's in the backyard and it's barking at the other dog on the side of the fence, and you open the door and you yell at the dog or throw something at the dog, how is the dog supposed to know what it's doing at that very moment that you want it to stop doing? Because at the same time it's barking, it's probably wagging its tail, it's probably panting, it's probably chasing up and down the fence. How is the dog supposed to know you want them to stop doing that one particular thing? So in order to teach the dog to stop barking, we teach the dog to bark. That way the dog understands what we want them to stop doing. Does that make sense? So with that in mind, if we're gonna teach your dog to leave things alone, what are we first gonna teach your dog? How to take it, you're absolutely correct. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna just simply teach your dog how to take food. Now you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, my dog knows how to take food already. So this is the one contrary to my rule about teaching a behavior before a command. Your dog already knows how to eat, so you don't need to put, you don't need to do a bunch of repetitions before you put a command to it. So basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna sit right there, you're gonna do three sets of 10, 
15 pieces of food. Say, take it, hand it to the dog. Just stand, stand up, please. Uh, grab dummy dog from it. Jolene. So we're gonna grab Jolene here. Jolene. Jolene, sorry. I like Jolene. Okay, good job. So when you do this, when Christina hands the dog the food, when she's going to hand the dog the food, we don't want the dog to jump up and try to take it from her, okay? So when you hand the dog the food, make sure you hand it clearly to the dog, kind of push in, you can just push it into its mouth a little bit, okay? Because I don't want the dog to try to see food and go take it because it's kind of taking away from what we're gonna teach the dog in a minute. So take it, good. Takes her hand away, take it. Now you see she's putting about three, about two seconds in between each one. Take it. <laughs> she doesn't want to do a bunch, like, she doesn't want to do that way quicker. Because watch what she, take it, take it, take it. The dog's not firmly understanding that take it means there's a piece of food coming. If you do it that quick. So you want to give it about a two or three second count in between take each it. time. Okay? Take it. Don't confuse this with the tension. If your dog stares at you, that's fine. But don't work on attention and take it at the same time. Just work on take it. Okay? Any questions? Okay, let's see you do three sets. Very much treats. No, I think it's food driven, so take it. 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 When she comes up like that, I want you to push that right now into her nose. And when the, when the four feet are on the ground, then feed her. So wait, get okay, push, there you go. Okay, let her jump up again. Okay, now put, oh, aha. Hold on, let her, we're gonna let her jump up, okay? Now push it into her nose, then feed her. So she doesn't get it till the food. Now feed her. Oh, good job, see she didn't jump up that time, right? Oh, good, okay. So we're almost teaching an opposite memory, a muscle memory. She thinks coming up on you is getting a reward. But what we're doing is we're actually being a little bit pushy and pushing into her, and then we're giving the reward. So she's realizing, oh, opposite, not coming up, it's actually getting down, which is good. Good. And if you can, if she, you go feed her for that. If you feed her one, and then it takes her four seconds to start, like feed her. Good, see if she didn't jump up on that time? It's better if we can feed her before she does than after she does. Does that make sense? Good job. Make sure when you hand, make sure when you say take it, you hand it to him. Yeah. I don't want him to go towards it. Hand it to him. Good job, just like that, good job. Okay. Can I use you again, please? Okay. Now the next step. So now that your dog understands what take it is, now we're gonna teach the dog what leave it is. So we always start with, you got the dummy dog. We always start with a couple take it. If we do too many leave it, everything turns into a leave it. Then what happens is the dog's brain kind of shuts off. The dog learns, oh, I know what's gonna come next and I'm just gonna stop thinking. I want your dog to really think, did mom say take it or did mom say leave it, okay? So Christina's gonna use our dummy dog here again. Okay, she's gonna start with a couple take it. Take, take it. it, good job. Take it. Okay, let's say she just did five of those. Now what she's gonna do, um, turn it a little bit sideways, please. Yep, there you go, so these people see. So now what she's gonna do is she's gonna take a piece of food, she's gonna hold it in palm of her hand, Almost in front of the dog's nose, but not like she's going to hand it. She's going to hold a little bit of the dog's head, and she's going to say, leave it. Now, let's say the dog goes forward to steal it. She's going to simply just close her hand. The moment the dog leaves it alone, she's going to slowly open her hand again. Okay, if the dog goes for it again, she's going to slowly close her hand. Okay, now she's going to open her hand again. 
What she's looking for is two different things. One, either the dog looks away and stops going for it. They can offer a behavior of looking at you or looking away, or the dog totally backs off from it, doesn't go for it. We want to teach the dog that leaving alone is the action of not going for it anymore. Leaving completely alone. Does that make sense? The moment the dog does, she says, take it, and she hands the dog the food. It's really, really important. If she doesn't leave it, okay? Leave it. She doesn't just hold her hand right there and, say, and then say, take it. Take because it. then it's not clear to the dog. We want to make sure the dog understands, I don't take it unless you hand it to me. Leave it. So this is really important. Imagine walking your dog down the street, and there's a nasty piece of food on the ground, and you tell your dog to leave it. But then your dog thinks, wait a minute, when I leave it alone, sometimes they just let me go take it. So what is the dog gonna do? Dog's gonna self-reward and say, okay, I left it alone for a minute, now I'm gonna go take it. You wanna make sure that the dog firmly understands that you're handing the dog the food and saying take it. Does that make sense? Can I do it with your dog real quick? Can I have you do it with your dog real quick? Okay, we're gonna do it with this dog really quick so you guys give me a little demo, and then I'll have you do it. Because Christina's dog did too well. Okay, so she's gonna do it. So we're going to do a take it. Okay. Take it. Oh, okay. Okay, we're going to do, we're going to do tempo. So I'm going to pick on you for a minute because I like you, okay? So she's using okay as a take it command. Here's the difficulty. If she's on her phone to her girlfriend and she says, okay, I'll be there in a minute, and the dog eats her hamburger, whose fault is it? <laughs> it's mine. It's mine, okay? So I really encourage you to do take it, but it's up to you, okay? This is your dog and your project, okay? Let's do it again, say either okay or take it. Okay. Good. Two more. Okay. One more. Okay. Good, now she's gonna put a piece of food in her hand, right above the dog's head, she's gonna say leave it. Leave it. Now say take, oh wait. So. Leave it. And say take it, nope. Okay, so okay. the dog did leave it alone for a minute. The dog didn't jump up. However, the dog says, wait a minute, I don't have, a, I don't have very good patience. I'm gonna try it again, okay? So the moment you put your hand down there, if the dog doesn't jump up, immediately say, take it, okay? Try it again. Good job. Okay, so the only thing I'm gonna comment on, she did really good, but I want your dog to actually be able to see the food. Her f hand was still in a cup, and so it kind of it kind of limited the dog's option of even taking it. I want your dog to be able to leave food alone, whether it sinks, whether it sees it or it doesn't see it. This is really important if you guys have a picnic or have family over and you have a plate of food down where the dog can 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 get it. You want the dog to be understand, even though I can see it, I still need to leave it alone. Okay? Let's see you guys try it. Try a couple take it and then a couple leave it. We'll come around to help you and go from there. Wait, good, okay, that wasn't too bad. Make sure when the dog going for it, you don't then say take it. Okay. Really make sure you say take it when the dog either moves its head away or looks away, okay? Make it really clear. Really? Yeah. Then you, yes, you still hand it to him, but maybe do less leave it then. Good. Watch this. Put a piece of food in the palm of your hand. Open your fingers. Open your fingers. Now say leave it. Close your hand. Good. Okay, hold on. I'll tell you when to feed, okay? Try it again. Leave it. Wait. Now say take it. Good. Just like that. Okay, good job. Okay, bring your hand down lower. Close your hand. Close your hand completely. Leave Wait, it. just leave it right there. It gets no success from that. Leave it. it takes patience. Wait, wait. Okay, slowly open your hand. Close it. Nope. Okay, slowly open your hand. Nope. Slowly open your hand. Close it again. Open it again. There. Take it. Good. So you see the dog 
had a little impulse control. Okay, the moment the dog doesn't go for it, all right, take it. Okay. It, it will take a long while for him. Good job. How's she doing? I'm thrilled she's so cool. I'm thrilled too. I thought she was going to be a little bit of a handful. Leave it. Take it. Good job. Yeah, so make she's really make sure you don't do too many leave it. Do one leave it for every ten take it or five take it. Okay. okay. If you do too many leave it, then pretty soon yeah, she's no. just gonna leave everything low. Right. She's not gonna use her brain. We want her to use her brain. Okay. So one leave it to ten take it. Not that many. Let's okay. say one leave it to five or six take it. Okay. 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 How's he doing? Good. Is he understanding? Awesome. How's he doing? Good. Leave it. Leave it. Slowly open your hand again. Yeah. Close your hand. There, good. Straight. There, there. Take it. Good job. Awesome. Good job. You're welcome. How's she doing? Get it? Yeah. Leave it. Okay. Nice. Good job. Does she okay? Be careful with the okay, good girl, because you're saying okay, good girl, right? So later, if you walk by something on the ground and she leaves it, you say good girl. What is she gonna do? Yeah. So try to make it super clear on her. Okay. I feel like you guys are doing pretty good. I think most of you guys. Pretty much got the concept. A couple of your dogs did really well. This dog here is going to have some difficulty. Higher the drive, the more the dog's going to fail. This dog here is a little bit sensitive already on taking food, so it's probably going to get it a little bit quicker just because it's just a little bit sensitive. So this is not something to say, okay, hey, my dog is leaving food today. I'm going to go home and just try this on other things, okay? I seriously had somebody do this. Their dog did really good on food. They went home and they let the cat go. And the next week, the dogs, they're like, hey, the dog didn't leave my cat alone. Okay, you have to build up to that. Think about values. So think about between one and 100. Your cat is like an 85 to a 95. Food is probably a 20 to 30. It's easy with a lower value. The more distraction, the harder it is. But if you're consistent with this concept and you teach, well, what a buddy of mine refers to a belief system, then you can apply this belief system to anything, whether you have livestock, whether you have skateboards, cars going by, basically leave it means I just don't go after it, I leave it alone, I look away from it, and when I do, there is a reward. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions on that? Okay, any questions on anything we covered tonight? We got about two or three minutes left. Oh, I, yes. because I missed last week, engage, was that the first thing you talked about? Yes, we talked about engagement. Yeah. Uh, after class, I'll work with you a little bit and I'll catch you up, okay? Okay. okay is there anything else going on at home that, that you guys want to talk about, address, questions, anything come up before I let you guys go? All right, well, you guys did really good. I will see you guys next week. So next week is Thanksgiving week. Um, are you guys all going to be able to be here? I kind of give it up to the class. If the class says, hey, if the majority of the class says I'm gonna be out of town, then I'll bump it, bump it a week. If you guys, majority of you guys can say I can be here, then we'll still have class. So, you guys wanna still meet next week or do you wanna take next week off? We'll be gone. Okay, so if you are gone, I offer a free makeup class. So if you're gone, the third class of this series, then next series, drop in on that class. You can make it up for free. I'm um, just like send me an email or uh, give me a call or whatever and remind me of that week, okay? All right, we guys did really good. I appreciate you being here, and I will see you guys next week then.